Let's bring in CFP Chad Burton to talk about retirement issues. Our concentration day is on financial planning, specifically retirement issues. Chad, welcome for being in with us today. And thanks for having me. Uh, let me mention we do have phone calls. Um, but if anyone has any sort of question on real estate, not real estate, retirement, um, estate planning, trusts, any sort of issues to do with retirement, call the show today, 800-440-4884. That's 800-440-4884. We're going to dedicate the whole show to questions on retirement issues. Now, Chad, let's talk a little bit about retirement. Um, how much is enough to retire on? Because I think that's the big question that seems to elude everyone out there of right. how much of a nest egg do I need? Well, you know, everybody asks, are they wealthy? But wealth is really relative to your lifestyle. So everything is based on your expenses. You can't possibly figure out whether or not you have enough unless you take your expenses. So your first step is to list all of the expenses that you have now and what you'll have in retirement. You have to project that forward with inflation to the date that you retire. I would use 3%. And then, uh, you know, calculate a nest egg that uh, assumes that you don't, you shouldn't draw more than 4% of your portfolio at age 65. If you have to draw more, you probably don't have enough. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about things that you can do to make sure that you have enough of a nest egg. And again, you know, nest egg I think is the key phrase here for most people, Chad. Right. Well, you know, if you're still saving for retirement, I mean, the first step is max out that 401k. If you're 50 or older, you can put 20 grand in a year now pre-tax. If you're self-employed, you can do things like solo 401ks, SEPs, and defined benefit plans. And I've seen people put away over $100,000 a year pre-tax if they can afford to save a lot of money. So really, when you're younger, when you're under the age of 55, it's put your head down, save, save, save as much as you can. Um, but when you get to retirement, you got to make sure you have enough, and you got to make sure you're you know, protecting your estate with long-term care insurance and, and having the proper insurance when you do retire. Now we're going to get to all of that in just uh, throughout the whole show, and again, we're looking for calls specifically on retirement issues today. Um, one of the things on retirement is, and again, I, th I think this is a concept that avoids most people, Chad, is that we tend to work from age 20, in my case, age 16, uh, to age 60. Right. So, and that's a defined period of time to get a nest egg, and you know, I see all too often people don't have a nest egg by the time they retire, and they think Social Security is going to be there for them, and it seems to me that Social Security is getting to be less and less as far as a quality of life that it could provide for our senior citizens. Maybe give us a little color on Social Security issues. Well, first of all, if you're 40 or under, I wouldn't even include it in your financial plan. Assume that it's not going to be there, even though I think it's going to be there in some way, shape, or form. It's assume it's not. And if you get it, it's just going to be gravy. Now, if you're uh, you know, over the age of 40 and you're going to retire in the next 15, 20 years, let's say, then you can put it in there, and typically Social Security each year has been going up by around 2% or so to keep up with inflation. I would assume a 1% or a 0% growth rate when you're projecting uh, that income into your retirement plan. But it's got to change, Rob. I mean, actually, Medicare is a, has a bigger problem than Social Security does in the health care that, that uh, senior citizens face. Now let's take a look at this still screen that we have here. It's the retirement pitfalls. We see poor tax planning. We see longevity, long-term health care costs. We see wrong decisions on Social Security, and we see a spouse dying. Let's talk a little bit about that tax planning issue, because I think longevity, obviously, outliving your nest egg is pretty obvious. Long-term health care costs, we can figure that out later in the show. But poor tax planning, what's that all about? Well, poor tax planning, a lot of people, you know, when they get to the point of retirement, they start drawing money out of their accounts. Most people tend to go after their after-tax dollars first. So in other words, they draw through all their cash, then they draw through all their stock accounts because the capital gains tax rates are lower, and then they wait to hit their IRA until 70 and a half when you're forced to take money out. And that's sometimes going to be the wrong bet. Um, what you should really do is play with the 15% tax bracket. You have ordinary income, and you could take over $60,000 of married family jointly and stay at 15% out of your IRAs, for example. And then you could also cash in some stocks and be at 15% federal gains, uh, capital gains rate. Um, so you really have to play with the idea of, of maxing out that 15% tax bracket. So sometimes it pays to, uh, in retirement, when you first retire, to pull a little bit out of the taxable accounts and a little bit about out of your IRA accounts. So if you wait and just do it all at age 70 and a half, all of a sudden you have a really low tax bracket and then age 70 and a half, the IRS tells you you have to pull money out of your IRAs and your tax jump bracket jumps way up and you lose all control. Okay, thanks very much. It's Chad Burton. He's a certified financial planner. He's going to be for, here for the whole